Hi, Simply Kinder, it's Jennifer, and I am here today with Marnie Ginsberg with Reading Simplified, and she is going to help us with some decoding tips. And we have heard you in our Facebook group, we've seen on our Facebook page, all of the places kindergartners are starting to transition into decoding all of the letters and sounds that they know. And so we wanted to get together to give you some decoding tips or a, a decoding tip that you can use in your classroom right away to have real changes with your students. So let's go ahead and get started with uh, Marnie. Welcome, Marnie. Thank you so much for having me, Jen. It is a treat to be here with your audience. I've been watching all your good work and the, the really uh, amazing fans and teachers that uh, share so many ideas too in your Facebook group. So thank you for having us on. I see Lilic is already here. Who else is here? I'd love to say hello to you all. Um, again, I'm Marnie Ginsberg from Reading Simplified and it's our mission to streamline reading instruction and accelerate students' reading achievement. So I'm really excited to bring you this um, quick blending trip trick for accelerating decoding because Jen said that this is what her audience is needing. Um, right? How many of you are working with kids and you want to teach them how to decode and you want to teach them how to blend, but it doesn't always work? <laughs> so that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, <clears throat> how do you teach blending? I would love to hear from you. Say where you're from where and uh, who you teach. You're probably teaching kindergartners. And then let us know how you teach blending. And we're going to get right into this quick trick trick that I promised you. Again, if you just came, um, you know, you're just probably showing up now. This is our topic Welcome. for today. Quick blending <laughs> trick for accelerating decoding. And I'm so honored to be here with Jen um, and the Simply Kinder community. So I'm seeing all sorts of folks. Tara says hello and hola and Diane and Jen hello. Scott and Rochelle and uh, Teresa's coming to us from Southern California. Charla, hello, Mary, Donna, uh, Kiara is coming to us from Virginia, Karen, Lucia, NYS, Lorena, also, also another Southern, Cali Southern California person, Jill, um, okay, Ola is all about the, the, the question about uh, how to teach blending, and this is an issue for you guys, right? Who else is there? Um, and you're from Canada, that's great. Okay, so how do you guys teach blending? We'd love to know so that uh, we can communicate as I teach the idea of what we have been finding is successful at a Reading Simplified. And okay, Jennifer, thanks so much. She's in South Carolina and she teaches sound by sound blending. Okay, awesome. I think that's probably the, if you're teaching decoding in a blend, a blend blending approach, uh, that's probably the most common. And we've got uh, Wendy and Camilla and Jennifer and Susan. And, uh, Susan's listening on the drive home. That's awesome. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. And, <laughs> Susan. <laughs> and what, who else? I'm sorry, I'm just not going to be able to catch all the names. Wyoming, N North Dakota. We've got the northern part of the country really well represented. And Kathleen is not just doing kindergarten, but also second, third, and fourth. So you've got your hands oh, full. Wow. Okay, so here's a blending tip that Christy uses. She uses shoulder, elbow, wrist, and roller coaster. So the, you, when the, probably when the, um, the top of the roller coaster is the beginning of the word, and the, you help the kids add sounds by uh, sound by sound. I love it. That's clever. And how many of you use one of those approaches? Charlotte. I think said, that's a hard. It's a hard question too. Like. When I'm at my small group, it's hard because like to say, well, what do I do? I just, I go sound by sound and yes. we blend them all together, but you can't use the word in the definition of the <laughs> word. So what is it that we're doing? That's a tricky question. Yes, that's that's well said. And in fact, um, I kind of have geeked out about the types of blending and or the types of decoding for about 20 years because I do, I have found that it makes a big difference especially for those kids who are going to struggle with reading. And so that's, mm -hmm. we're going to get kind of nitty gritty with it to, sa to save those kids that are, that are really struggling. And Sharla says she uses a blending board for whole group instruction and something different for small group. Okay, so that blending board showing kids sounds left to right. I love it. What else are you guys doing? Anne taps their, the words sound by sound. How many of you tap? 
at they tap as they look at it maybe that is a very popular one and Cassie what do you what is amplified teaching you to, to, to do for blending okay so and Christy says sound by sound and Susan says Elkona boxes all right we've got some really diverse uh, ideas here I love it thank you so much and Brittany says sound by sound uh, in my experience um, working with teachers and that's what I've been doing for mostly the, the better part of 20 years as well as working with students myself I have found that most programs and most teachers, like what we've been hearing from you all, um, do the sound, sound, sound word approach. And in fact, some, like I said, that's what programs recommend. So if you were to teach the word, uh, let's do the word sad, and you're helping your kids read that word, a sound by sound approach, sound, sound, sound would be like this. Let's read it together. S -a D. And then what word? Well, you see, Jennifer, you are trying to kind of put it together as you go, which is one approach. And mm -hmm. I think that's the better approach, which we're going to talk about. But the other one would be more of a segmented tapping mm -hmm. thing. S -a -d. And then you get to the word. What's the word? Sad. Okay, so what Jennifer was doing is really what I found is more effective. And I'm going to point you to a research st study that also has found this to be more effective with kinder kids so it's totally what you guys are working uh, with and instead of saying it isolated you from the very beginning you connect the first two sounds sad sad so we call this strategy blend as you read and it's different from the sound 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 approach so they're very subtle one is sound 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 what word and the other is put them together from the very beginning. Sad. Sad. And frankly, for a lot of kids, it doesn't matter which one of those you do. But the kids that are going to struggle, and you can't identify them always in kindergarten. The kids who are going to struggle, they need the latter. They need that, what we call, blend as you read. There's some other names for it. So that's what we call it, Read Simplified. But frankly, it doesn't matter what you call it. Here are some names that you often will see in the in the literature, you'll see continuous blending, you'll see successive blending, and here's a new one that was in the research study that I'm going to point out to you, continuant phonation. So I think that's a mouthful <laughs> that I, I don't think will catch on, but it is what is in the study that has made a big splash that was just recently published. And Austin's asking, is this recorded? Absolutely. And I know the Simply Kinder team is going to share it out with you, and it'll also probably be here in this Facebook feed wherever you're watching from. Yes. And um, Wendy says she's using a Becca and looking for new ideas. Awesome. Okay, uh, Lori's suggesting to Jaylene that this is very helpful. So thank you, <laughs> Lori. <laughs> and Katie agrees. She says she covers the first two letters and has the children say the sound and then uh, uncover the last. Do you mean you 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 cover the last? The, you mean you cover the last two? You probably don't mean you cover the first two. So I would cover those what do you have put those two together sad what's the word sad it's a lot easier for the child to blend that way okay why is it easier and why are we suggesting this approach um, number one they're immediately starting to put make a real word the word when you already start to say sad you're on your way to the word so it's it's doing the hard work of decoding and also connecting it with meaning from the get-go. And so the sooner you get meaning connected to decoding, the better off those kids will be. Also, it's less memory work. So sad might not be that many sounds, but remember, we're talking about kinders, right, who are maybe working hard just to figure out, what is this sound again? You know, they have to, their brain is processing, so they go, they work hard, they get here, and they've gone sss and they've gone ah, and they have to work hard to come up with this is duh, and by the time they do all that, it's a they lot forgot. of working memory. Cognitive yep. load is what they call it. And so, how many of you have seen this? S, ah, d, d, dog. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> I knew it was coming. <laughs> dog. Right, it's like last, last in, first out. <laughs> um, this is, because that's a sign that this was just too much for their memory. 
And it's I love person. that. I love how you said that because I know as a kindergarten teacher, I've seen so many students who that's what happens. They blend the sounds and then they go and they say a different word and it that like what you just said, I had a light bulb come on for me. Like you're right, we're overloading them in just simply the strategy that we're using them to teach it. Yeah. That wow, okay, I had an aha. And so then if it's even harder if you're gonna get to um, this word. Okay, my handwriting's not so good. But okay, let's do the the sounds. I mean that's a lot to remember, right? Yeah. And so we want to set kids up from the day one with the, as I said, the blend as you read strategy. And how about I show some videos of kids doing this who are just now learning it and it's kind of labored, but it's working for them. Perfect. Okay, good. Let me just check to see if I'm missing anything. Ah, Jeannie, really good point. She says, uh, mine actually drop the first sound if they don't connect the sounds. Yep. Okay. And Brittany says she loves the strategy or she's liking the strategy. Awesome. Good. Okay. So let's check out a short little video. It's a little quiet, this first video. So you might want to, as soon as it starts, you might want to turn up your volume. It is a little boy who is a kindergarten student uh, with a speech language deficit. And he was already identified in kindergarten as struggling with reading, but he's coming along with a blend as you read strategy. And he's going to do a four sound word slap. So notice he's not saying S oh. And then trying to figure it out, he's putting them together as he goes. So this is um, the blend as you read strategy in action with, I think the word slap, if I've got the right video coming up. <laughs> okay, let's put these sounds together. Okay, what are the first two sounds? Um, so. Put them together. So. Ah. Put all three together. So. Oh, ah. You put the sounds together. Now say each sound. Beauty. Okay, let's erase and say the sound. Can I redo this one? Sure. You want to fix your ah? Yeah. Down. Nice, much sharper. Okay, now erase and say the sounds. And actually that last step is um, part of the activity that we teach at Reading Simplified. And it's easy for anyone to pick up. So he would have read the word. Of course, the teacher writes it first. And then uh, and he did the blend as you read strategy. You notice how the card helped, helped him focus. And then he writes the sounds. Oh, I thought I had a different color. It's nice if you have a different color, but I That's don't. Okay. <laughs> oh, ah. He's writing it while he says it, which is another reinforcement of the letter sound knowledge and another reinforcement of segmenting and just kind of the beginnings of spelling. And then to get one final reinforcement, you can do erase. This is really going to help him make the connections between sounds and symbols. But that's, that's secondary really to the big issue of can he blend the sounds? Because that's how you're going to get started to be able to read, right? And that was a speech kiddo. Yes. He said? Yes. He That's was amazing. Yeah, he was really struggling when he first started that. And actually, there's another activity that we do that parallels with this, um, supports kind of sound processing. We call it Switch It. And I know you have um, an, a way for your your audience to connect with this event because this event, I'm going to teach Switch It. Um, and it will parallel really well with this activity that I was just showed you. We just saw read it, and in this event, um, that Jen might be able, or her team might be able to put the link in. Well, yeah, we'll get all the info. Yeah, so we're going to be zeroing in on that activity, switch it, which helps kids perceive the sounds and words, and um, they it would have re it really helped that little boy with the speech issue, and then it paves the way to being able to do blend it blend as you read. Um, so this event is starting next week on the 18th. We call it Level Up Your Reader's Achievement in the next five days. So I coach you 
um, on how to test this activity out. And we also see one boy do the activity for five days in a row. It's great fun. Wow. Teachers, um, parents, grandparents always see a lot of benefits from it. So that's why we thought your, um, your, your kindergarten teachers are just really a good match for that activity at this time of the year. You know, they know some letter sounds, but maybe yeah. they're not making the connection. And this switch and activity kind of paves the way for the blend as you read strategy and that read it activity, which I just showed you. Do you suggest blending once they have a group of letters under their belt or waiting until they have all their letters? Good question. Um, yeah, at Read Simplify, we are trying to, to simplify it and accelerate the process. And so we say, you know, if they have even one letter sound, you can still do this activity and you provide the information that they don't have. You know, you do high scaffolding, in other words, and then you help them try to do it. So if this child doesn't know, maybe really doesn't know any of these letter sounds, but maybe knows one, um, they go S and then you go and try ah and you know, put it together, and they go sa, and then you lift it up and they're like, and you go d, sa, d, oh sad. And then they can get into the game. So they're, then they, then they write it. And again, if they can't remember, what's that second sound? It's a, and you might even dot it. This is how you do it. So you're just scaffolding it with really high support. Of course, this is harder in a classroom setting so small group, it works better in a small group setting, or you can do it whole group and just do a lot of scaffolding and have kids come up and participate. But at least when you have three, four, five sounds, start them with real reading, real okay. words, real books. Like I know you have a, a growing collection of decodables. That type of thing will work perfect for this, those CVC letter sounds. Um, we don't need to wait till the whole alphabet is learned before they can start the decoding process and start to identify as readers. So yeah, it's a really I always good felt question. like it gave meaning to the learning the letter sounds that, right. okay, well now you know these sounds, let's put them together so that right. you can, you know, it just kind of opens that, that world up to them where they're looking around and they're looking for, you know, like, oh my gosh, these aren't just things on the wall. Those are words. Right. You know? I totally so. agree. It, it's like, gives it context. Otherwise, yeah. they might not know what the heck are the, <laughs> we're learning these squiggles and the ah uh, otter. Okay, what does yeah. that have to do with, you know, school or they don't get the connection, and this yeah. helps make the connection really clear. And so even if they can only re read the word sat or sad, but you read the rest of the book, then it'll be like, oh, this is how writing works. This is how reading works. Now I'm starting to get it. Yeah. That's a really good idea too. Sorry, I'm getting so much from you. I know you have a schedule of the things you need to, you want to get through, but like, I've never thought about doing that. Like if I have a student who I know can be successful with just one word in a book, I read the book to them and just let them in those decodables, read that one word right. again and again and again. Like that's, that's a really yeah. good tip to a really good strategy that I personally never did. Or, you know, if they have five letter sounds, then they can read the any CVC word that has the, they could read sad or sat or mad or mat. You know, it doesn't take many letter sounds and they can yeah. read the, those words. I might even have a video example of a teacher doing that. Let me see. Um, we call it buddy reading, you know, just high scaffold. Um, yeah. Read, I don't think I, I don't think I have it right handy after all, but. Well, that's okay. <laughs> but yeah, it is. I, I I highly recommend it because it just gets right to the the meat, the heart of the matter, much more quickly. And this, uh, somebody was asking if this is a picture frame. No, this was actually something I found at Target. You know, the dollar section, I think. And there used to be a dry erase marker here, so oh. they're fun. I even have different colors, so I'm going to switch That's to cool. yellow since someone noticed my cool dry erase boards. Okay, so. Um, let me see what questions. Okay, we do have one good question here, at least. How would you do this with a small group? Okay, so um, one way to try it with a small group is to have cards. So you don't have to, you can't write on everybody's board. So you can hold up a card, or you can give one child a card and give another child a different card. Or you could give one child a card, everyone watches that child read it and you coach them doing that blend as you read business and then everyone writes it and then you know then one child did rip the next child did hat 
Um, so that there's there's a couple different ways. It depends on how far along you, those kids are in their their ability to do the activity, and then of course no recognize letter sounds. So that's. I'm just one. thinking too with um, we have a word kit. And actually, I don't know. It's not. I was going to say I might have it here, but we have a word kit um, that we that we have for teachers, and it, it you know it's one of these cute little bins, but each container has a different specified set of words. So if I'm working on short A or short I or short U with a specific group, I could just easily go grab that one card. It's even got a section where the words are mixed up. So that way, if you're just working on CBC, then you have a mixed set of those cards too, that that would be a really good uh, way to implement that as well and keep it all organized and yeah. um, you know readily available at your small group table. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Mim's pointing out, she's a tutor in Australia. She, so she works with some challenging cases, and she points out that this technique works really w well with kids who don't have good working memory, who forget the first sound or the sounds by the time they get to the end of the word, right? Uh, what are so, If you guys want to share a funny blending example, I'm sure that we would appreciate that. Like the, <laughs> the, the, the what was the, the one that I did? Sad, ah, de, dog. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, there's all sorts of fun ones. I'm thinking though too, like in kinder, it's so um, like so many, especially now with the world the way that it is. Um, you know, with kids not seeing the mouths and not yeah. having preschool as much, that they're yeah. not coming in with as much language background as they may have. And so, I feel like in our community, we're seeing a lot more students who are coming in that are not, you know, not as quickly successful at some of these tasks. And so breaking it down like this, like she was talking about working with, you know, some pretty you know, difficult cases of kids who can't read or still struggling to learn to read. We all have those in our class. I mean, one in five kids, they say, is dyslexic. So now you've got everything else, you know, compounded right. that it, you know, it really it really can help those kids, all kids, but especially those kids who are struggling. Yeah. So I thought I would go over the steps because you I've talked about okay. it. I've modeled it a little bit and then we saw the video, but it's also kind of helpful just to really get this into your brain. So in some way, the teacher writes the word. It could be on a dry erase board. It could be on a word card. It could be on a piece of paper. It doesn't have to be dry erase, but let me tell you, those kids love it when you do the dry erase. I'm sure you know that. So the, so the teacher writes the word and then the student does the blend as you read strategy. An important part of that when they're beginning is to kind of scaffold it by not letting them see the end of the word and get them to that vowel and they they carry the vowel some people even say they sing it hat hat so they read it and then they start writing it here she's doing the word up um, and so that would be the beginner another kid might be reading the word swim which is four sounds it's a little harder but you still cover up the I am and get them to go to put the swoo, and then you re reveal the I, and they would do swi swim. They read it, and then they start to write it. S -i -m. And then remember, they're erasing it afterwards by saying the sounds individually to get another practice in segmenting. And so the card can be really helpful on a dry erase, but also when you're in the middle of text, because we want to carry this activity into actual text. So we use a notch card. I've discovered this from some teacher like 15 years ago, and it's really very popular. Just put this over the text, that whatever book that you're reading, and that will block the, the ending of the word, oh. and it focuses their attention. So a notch card, any piece of paper, just cut a little notch out of it. An index card works really well because it's just something you can manipulate pretty easily. And so those are the steps that we use in the activity we call read it. It's, it's pretty simple though. The child reads it, then they write it, and they, and they write it and they say it, and then they erase it. And all these things are being learned t simultaneously. Okay, so I don't, I'm not showing it to you. Here we go, people. Sorry. <laughs> This is what I was trying to show you. All the, all those. Did you see this one? Actually, did, did, did I? Was I covering up? Could you see that? Yeah. One? No, we saw that one. Okay. Did I just, I just turned it off for some strange reason. Okay. This was what I was saying. Is in read it. All these things are happening with that activity all together. They're getting the concept of a word. They're learning how to f segment phonemically. They're especially learning how to blend phonemically or do phoneme blending because that's the main thing of this activity and it's the main thing of an early reader. 
They're getting the concept of the alphabetic principle, that concept that our written code is um, re is a representation of sounds and words. Yeah. Yeah, they don't get that naturally. It's not natural yeah. to anyone. They're getting left to right tracking. They're learning more about letter sound knowledge. They're getting the first most important decoding strategy, which we call blend as you read. And they're even doing a little bit on the way towards spelling. So all of that happens when you just do those simple steps, which you can, you know, see with this. Read the word, write it and say it. It's really important to connect it uh, with sounds. And then um, the erasing is, if you, if you have the, the bandwidth and the dry erase board handy, then it helps reinforce things, this is especially for the beginner. After a little while, you take away the card. You move. You don't. You're not just doing three sounds. You move up to four sounds. And um, but these are how to get the kids over the hurdle. So I wanted to let you know that I have been using this strategy for 20 years as a reading tutor, and I've worked with a lot of kids who have real big reading challenges. And our reading simplified teachers and parents and grandparents have been using it for a while. But it's not just our idea. There are a few other programs that teach this. Um, and there are a couple but not many studies that have specifically looked at this question of how should we teach blending. And so um, Linnea Airy is a co-author of this page, paper that was written by Celindid um, Gonzalez Frey. And they just compared two simple approaches. The one that we talked about the most at the top of the hour, the sound, sound, sound word approach, where, or segmented blending. At sat, that approach, the segmented approach versus what they called connected phonation, but we're calling blend as you read. Sat, sat. I mean, you don't have to actually draw the line. I'm just doing that to show the, yeah, to show the concept, but it's really what the child is just being taught to do is go sat, sat. And when they compare those two, segmenting versus, um, connecting, continuous blending, successive blending, they found that the kids who did the successive blending or the continuant um, phonation, they got a lot better um, outcomes. And this is what they said, quote, we were surprised that children learned to decode so quickly, given that they could not decode non-words on the pretest. So they would see something like um, zut, three sound word, and they could not put it together. Because they couldn't blend, right? Because maybe they, and, and they knew the letter sounds. They had tested them on letter sound. So then they taught them how to put those sounds together left to right. And it was literally about 20 minutes and those kids were blending words they had not known how to read before. In contrast, the kids wow. who had tried the segmented approach, they did not figure it out very well at all. Yeah. And this study also... That's amazing. This, it was really surprising to them. You don't normally hear reading researchers say things like, surprise and so quickly they're very you yeah. know like scientific and so this was a little bit of like emotion <laughs> so yeah it was a big deal and um of course it's just one study and good science is usually the convergence of a lot of, yeah. of papers there are some studies from the 80s that are quoted in this um paper that also found the same thing. They just hadn't really been as influential. And this one, because Linnea Area is one of the giants in the reading research field, she's the one that has termed, uh, coined the term orthographic mapping. And she did a lot of the research to lead to that concept of how we form sight words. She's um, just very well respected. So well respected, I think yeah. this, um, I think this, and because also like our clinical experience has, it seems to have worked. So um, I think um, we should. What exciting is seeing some of that clinical stuff start to actually reach classroom teachers? Yeah. Yes. Um, I know. I mean, I have a master's degree in early childhood literacy with a reading endorsement, and I struggled when my own two children learned to read. Mm -hmm. And so, um, it kind of you know when I started looking into it, this whole other world of literacy opened up. So it's really like for me, just like professionally, I remember being in, you know, appointments with my children and being like, can I just go live on my giant Facebook page and like have everybody hear what you're saying? Because I've never heard this before and I'm sure I'm not the only one, right. you know, and they think I'm crazy, you know, because I'm like, I'm going to bring you some people who need to right. know this. 
Right. <laughs> but it's really exciting to see it finally start to hit the classroom. And um, because it really, I mean, just minor tweaks and things right. can make a huge difference for so many students. And it's mm -hmm. good for all students. That's you right. Know, not just the struggling, the struggling right. readers. So, so well said. I know so many teachers can resonate with your experience. That was actually my experience. I mean, I was a sixth grade teacher in the late 90s, and I had a master's, had a reading education class, and I had kids that were reading. They were sixth graders, but they were reading at the fourth grade. That was like the average of my class. And I could tell they yeah. didn't know how to really attack unknown words. And then I had two kids that were reading not even at the first grade level, and I was like, uh... Uh, <laughs> I didn't yeah. know what to do about it. And that's frustrating because you'd feel like that you'd be prepared to teach yeah. any words because it's pretty important. So that's why I've been pretty obsessed about this ever since. Um, and it is getting more in, and more in, into the hands of teachers and the Mainstream. science is bursting yeah. out. Uh, but it still can be confusing and there's a lot of information out there. So I do think that that one simple strategy that we're calling Read It is, a, is just something you can take with you, you know, and try it out tomorrow. Or if you have a kid in your house, you can try it tonight. It's not... Well, and that's what I love about your program is it does make everything so simplified. Like it's... So much of this can be so overwhelming, reading the research, understanding mm -hmm. what you're supposed to do, trying to do the right things. And it's like, dude, let's just break it down. When I have those kids at my small group table, what am I supposed to do? Mm -hmm. There you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She just showed us what to do based off of what, you know, mm -hmm. um, some of the research shows. Yeah. That's Jennifer was, had the same issue, and she'd even had really significantly good training, but still that one little tweak that we were talking about today, success of blending, really made a difference yeah. for her son who was struggling at the time. So how about a couple more um, video examples of this interaction? Sure. Okay. So um, the next one is a, um, a example of a child blending the word trust and this one instead of doing the, the card um, we put it in an envelope so the child has to gradually actually the teacher is holding it and, and gradually releasing it it's to kind of force the blend as you read strategy if the child's not wanting to do it and or to make it look more like a game now we've come to call this the mystery word envelope and I can show you two examples of this so this is the word trust which is a pretty hard word to blend right because it's t -r -t 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 five sounds, two consonants at the beginning, two consonants at the end. And so it's much better to just blend as you read. Trust, that kind of thing. So, all right, here's an example of blends you read with the word trust. Oh, maybe I'll trick you into saying one the sounds separately. Trust. <laughs> what is it? Trust. I trust that you are going to beat me, and I'm going to have to quit. No. <laughs> How many do you get? One. So that was just a little game. Uh, if he read it correctly, he got to keep the card. He got more points, and I was trying to get cards that he couldn't read, or more importantly, that he wouldn't use the strategy for. Then that's when I win, but he kept winning, yeah. which, you know, this is how that game normally ends up. Yes. So um, let's see another one. This would be the same kind of thing, mystery word envelope. The child's gradually showing more and more sounds. And then there's a picture afterwards so that she can confirm or he can confirm that the word was read correctly. So this is something that can work for more independent reading time. Uh, okay, detector camera rolling. What does it say? Bad, yes, way to go. Give me a high five. I love it. Ellie, you're going to share yours with me? Read it for me. What does it say? Eh, eh, eh. Eh. Pig. Pig. Pull it all the way out. Let's see. Is you right? It is right. And I love it. You're writing it on your board. Say the sounds. Miss Glick, Miss Glick, can I pull it out to see what I draw? Yes, you can. Oh, but that G is backwards. Go ahead and look at your card now and have a look at that G. We gotta turn that G around. So you can, you know, integrate handwriting obviously with it too, and that's why a little oversight is going to be important. But uh, wasn't it cool how she kind of hid? Did you notice she hid the word? So she was trying to think. Okay, I'm gonna. What do I hear in the word pig? I hear. P what do I hear next? Eh. That's a great uh, challenge for kids at this level. 
I love too that she um, she didn't technically put her card in the envelope. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you've ever noticed that, but it just shows that she's taking ownership of that process too. That she mm. knows it doesn't matter if it's in the envelope. It doesn't matter. She's just sliding that word and blending that word as she reads it. Mm -hmm. So very good. All right. So if there are questions that we haven't answered, maybe if or if I miss them, let me know. Um, Oh, interesting. Rachel says the search for how to best help kids, kids learn to blend is what brought her to Reading Simplified. <laughs> and we're so glad you did. Um, awesome. Okay. I, I can't tell you how many teachers, when we announced that we were doing this, we got so many emails and so many comments of people excited to hear that we were hosting you. <laughs> um, just because it, it's neat. It's almost like they were like reassured that like, you know, that, oh, okay, this is a place where we're going to, you know, kind of get a wide variety and, mm -hmm. and she's aware that the shift is happening. Mm -hmm. And, um, that's one of the things I think I was really excited to see. Um, mm -hmm. a lot of people already know who you are and already excited to the, and they knew what was coming. So thank you for that. Thank oh, you. it's my treat. It's, it's obviously my honor. I'm really glad that's, that's fabulous. Um, well, I'll answer questions if you guys have them, but I also thought I could kind of uh, roll, um, finish up with coaching you on some tips for when the kids can't do it. Because you know, you probably, when you first saw it, you were thinking, okay, sure, I can cover up the last letter sound, but the child's not going to be able to put this in the, the, the A ah together, right? How many of you were thinking that? <laughs> if they're really early on and they can barely figure out that this is a S and this is an A ah, and their blending is not good what can you do so what we often do is try to get them to do it okay put those first two sounds together you said and the child usually will say s and then ah yes now can you put them together just those two by themselves da -da 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 -da. nope they can't do it okay so then model it for them okay when when i put these two sounds together i see now I want you. Now Jennifer, can you be my my getting sure. pig student? So, uh, so modeling alone is not good enough. You actually want to put the burden back on the child and start the gradual release of responsibility, right? So the first step would be okay. Well, I hear or I see and say sa. Now can you try it? Sa. Keep holding that a. Ah. Sa. And the last sound. And the word. What do you think the word is? Sad. Yes, like, can you use that in a sentence? I was sad when it was not a three-day weekend. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay, and now I want you to write the sounds as you say them. So that's the first step. If you do that kind of model and have the student copy, it won't take that long for most kids to pick this up. Um, and yet, you'll still find some other problems. So another one, if you've been doing that for like, three days with lessons or a whole week of lessons and you're just modeling and they're not getting it, the next step would be to give them a little bit more scaffolding. And so um, you would, might tell them, okay, we're gonna read a word and it's gonna be one of these three things. And I'm a bad artist, kids, so you'll just have to bear with me. But this is a sun, okay. a snake, and this is if you sit, okay? Sun, snake, or sit, all right? So I want your help reading this word, okay? So what are those first two sounds? And now that you, yeah, hold it, sit. Yes, because you put it into their working memory, it's kind of rattling around there, it's probably a little easier. So that's another way to scaffold them. Again, don't do this for, just like the modeling, um, don't do it for very long because they will um, allow you to baby them for weeks <laughs> so yeah. try to yeah. keep withdrawing it and then challenge them to do it without the support but those two things usually get most of our kids over that hurdle and then secondly a thing that feeds into it is really you just have to also kind of be it's not just a blending issue you need to know pretty quickly that this is this is it and this is to because if you're doing all that processing of what is this it's a letter s what sound is s, s. what sound is this it's an I, what sound is I? You know, all those things da, 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 are a lot of steps the child is going through and then they gotta blend. That's a lot of, again, cognitive yeah. load for the child. So automaticity with letter sounds can also help. And that's why, again, we thought that bringing up this issue of blending 
with you guys and then also letting you know about this event um, where we're going to teach switch it which really builds automaticity of letter sounds among other things would be helpful because they really are just like a great pair and I'll show you that again if you haven't heard about that uh, the Simply Kinder team has a link for you guys to join us in oh, this good. upcoming event. So it's called Level Up Your Reader's Achievement in the Next Five Days. And we're going to try to switch it, an activity that pairs well with the activity that we're talking about today, read it. So those kids can build a letter sound automaticity and they can figure out how sounds and symbols connect pretty well. So then when you're ready to do this blending activity, um, they're going to be more functioning at it. So we would love for you guys to join us in that free event. Uh, we do it pretty much once a year now because... Um, oh, wow. First of all, it takes a lot. It, it's a very tiring. We just pour a heart into it. All the, a lot of coaching and in the Facebook group, and that's very fun to see to support yeah. people from all over. But um, but it makes such a difference. It's just amazing how, like you said, just one little Small tweak. tweak. Yeah. Yeah. And it's kind Small of like tweaks, making all it is. Yeah. It's kind of like making words, except we put the burden on the child to make the switch. Okay, you have sat. How are you going to change it to sit? And that much change in the process really makes the kid's brain have to switch on. <laughs> so, yeah. As um, Mim says, it helps them learn the letter sound relationship and also helps cement the word into their brain. And here, in you, if you guys didn't already catch it, there's that link to um, jump in and join that free event. We're calling it Level Up. Linda likes the picture idea. It really helps if you're a better artist, too. But, you know, it doesn't matter. The point is to get the words in the children's working memory. Sun, sit, snake. Okay. That's kind of helpful. That's definitely another strategy that I know that I never did at my small group table. Like, and you, you know, we all have those kids where we do it, we do it, we do it, we do it, do it. And it just doesn't click with them. Right. And it's, you're right. It's, they're trying to remember what S, what I, and what T, what sounds those make. And then mm -hmm. they're trying to come back together to get the word. So just by giving them that little bit of picture support mm -hmm. um, and vocabulary support too. Yes. So many of our students, um, you know, the vocabulary, a vocabulary issue, you know, it, it presents itself in different ways with mm -hmm. students. Mm -hmm. And so just giving them that little bit of vocabulary ahead of time can definitely help them to feel that success. So that way they can do it again and do it again and do yes. it again. So, yeah, so many great ideas. You. Uh, in your quick little training. Yeah, we've got, um, a, got a couple more questions. And then perfect. we'll go wrap for it. it. Okay. Yeah, Pam asked, do you recommend switch it before these activities? So um, we actually do them simultaneously. So that switch it activity where kids change mat to mit to mit to sit, we do that the same lesson as we would do this. And they both just kind of support one another. And if they can't do one element of it, like they don't know that I is it, then we just say, oh, this is it and move on. Um, and I like this, Linda, she's pointing out that maybe that blending thing is more of like a self-esteem issue and they're just kind of blocked and the pictures can give them a little bit more, uh, mm -hmm. reduce the fear probably, right? Yeah. That's thoughtful. Okay. Um, and let's see if I missed anything else. There was a question about writing. Okay. Yeah. This is a good question, Mimi. Is writing the word every time an important component? I have many students who cannot write their letters yet. How many of you can relate to Mimi? Give us a thumbs up or a heart. Um, I'm sure that's, you know, in the North America, we're in um, just month two, really, of kindergarten. So, okay. It's a mixed answer. Definitely. Uh, it's not important to do it every time, but the more you can lean towards the writing component, the faster they're going to learn because we actually have studies that show that writing and saying the sound or helps it, um, the letter sounds get learned faster than moving them or typing them. However, you know, you've got a lot of things that you're dealing with. And so if you, to, to manage 25 kids and have them all right and then right wrong, that may not be the right thing either. So a modification may be necessary. Um, what I like to do is just dot them or provide paper where they're dotted already. If you have, like if you're doing this a whole group. Um, so what, so if they've already read the word sit, um, they've written the word sit. I might just, okay, what's that first sound that you're going to write? And they tell me, S -s -s, and I say, okay, this is where we're going to start. S -s -s. Start here. And, and then what's that next sound? Eh. Okay, we're going to start at the top. 
And so then they, they write over it. But again, you know, you can't dot letters for 25 kids. But you can dot yeah. letters for one kid in a group of three. So, and then um, maybe you can't dot, maybe they can't write it every day, but maybe they write one word and three words they just read. So kind of think about knowing that the writing and um, the saying of the sounds is really helpful for building these letter sounds, automatic, the letter sound automaticity, knowing that, but knowing also the realities of classroom management. Put yeah. those things together to make a decision that fits for your context, maybe. All right. Well, your 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 audience is just lovely, and we had so many great questions. I'll try to get back into this um, post here and answer questions that I might have missed. And we love you. Hang out in our group all the time and fun. answer questions. Mm -hmm. So we super appreciate that as well too. Thank you. Um, again, thank you so much for showing. I know I personally picked up probably four or five. It was supposed to be one little tip for reading, and there's <laughs> at least four or five that I walked with. It's just nice to hear what other teachers do sometimes because yes. I, you know, what may seem like, you know, everybody does it to you is to me or another person is not everybody does it. So, yeah. Oh, I just saw that, right? The word with the highlighter and then have the child That's trace clever. it. That's yeah, Mary, thank you. strategy, mm -hmm. too. Yeah, but yes. thank you so much for joining us, and we um, hope that you guys will all sign up for the next step of it mm -hmm. um and there's a link in the comments and if you have any questions be sure to let us know and we thank you for joining us and have a great night everyone